What's up smart homers? I've had a wall mounted tablet for just over a year now and a lot of you have been asking me for an update on how it's going. In this video, I'm going to go over some of the questions that you guys have asked me in the past few months, and I'll give you some recommendations if you're looking to set one of these up. There'll be chapters set up in the description, so if you want to skip some of the stuff you already know, you can go ahead and do that. If you don't already know, Home Assistant is my smart home platform of choice, and for good reason, because it has one of the best dashboard displays that I've ever seen. Like I said, I've had this tablet for over a year now, and about eight months ago, I set up a second one in my basement. For the second setup, I actually used a newer version of the tablet than I did with my first one. For each setup, I used a Fire HD 10 tablet, a 3D printed mount, a recessed electrical box, a USB electrical outlet, and a right angle USB charging cable. The total cost for the setup ends up being between 160 US dollars and 200 something US dollars, depending on if you can get a good deal on the tablet. On Prime Day, these tablets go on extreme sales, and if you follow me on Twitter, you'll see me tweet out about them when they do go on sale. Since my last video, I've made a few noteworthy changes that I should bring up. As I mentioned, with my first setup, I used a 2019 version of the Fire HD 10 tablet, but with my second tablet, I actually used the 2021 version, and there is a marked difference in performance. Where the 2019 version kind of stuttered and lagged a little bit when it was trying to load some browser pages, the 2021 version was much smoother. The addition of the fully kiosk integration in Home Assistant eliminates the need for creating sensors in YAML like I did in my previous video. This makes the setup so much easier. Watching my last video back again, I noticed that I mentioned that I was going to use my tablet as an Echo device and replace the Echo Dot in my kitchen, but that never happened and that's because the speakers on this device are pretty bad. It ended up actually just interfering when I'd be talking to my Echo Dot, so I ended up just turning off that feature completely on the tablet. Lastly, you may recall that I made a video on how to smart charge the tablet using a smart USB outlet. I still do this on one of my tablets, and I still do think it will prolong the tablet's life based on my research, but my plan was to do it on one and not the other, and then compare the battery life of the two tablets. I honestly don't care at this point and am no longer planning to actually follow up and show if the battery life was better on one than the other. As my smart home has matured, I've migrated away from the Tuya smart life devices that I used when I first set up my smart home. For the first tablet setup, that smart outlet that I was using to charge the tablet was actually a Tuya smart outlet. And if I was doing this again and I want to smart charge a tablet, I definitely wouldn't use a Tuya device since they're not as reliable as something that doesn't require the cloud. I will say that this device has been pretty reliable though. While it was a fun project smartifying the charging of the tablet, I don't think I'll ever do it on my second tablet and I probably wouldn't add it on a third. For those of you who didn't see my first video, and want to know how I actually set this up and installed it, or for those of you who complain there wasn't enough footage of the actual setup and install, I'm going to go ahead and show you how I set up and installed my second tablet. It's actually not too bad to set up, provided you know how to wire electrical outlets, or you have an electrician that can help you. First, you got to choose where to place the tablet. I chose high traffic areas, one in my kitchen and one in my basement, because that's where it could get the most use and where I could see the data I want displayed. Next, I chose which tablet I wanted. The best deal price-wise that I could find on a 10-inch tablet was the Fire HD 10. On top of that, I found a video where someone showed how to use the Fire Toolkit to put the Google Play Store and Google Play services on the device, effectively making it a Google Android tablet. This was a no-brainer for me, and if I did another one, I would still use a Fire tablet. Next, I had to choose a mount for the tablet. Now I've seen all different kinds of mounts, some that mount to outlets, but seem kind of flimsy, but the best ones I could find were ones that were 3D printed, but since I didn't have a 3D printer set up at the time, and my 3D printing bed now is still not big enough to print one of these easily, I decided I would just pick one up. There are plenty of options out there, and there are ones you could buy from Amazon or from Etsy, and while they're not the cheapest, 
They've done the design work for you, so you're kind of paying them back not only for the product itself, but for that design that they've done. There are a few different ones that work, but the best one in my mind was the one I chose from Motifs Etc. on Etsy. Next, I had to decide what app it would run. Technically, I could have just used the Home Assistant app since this tablet was effectively an Android tablet, but I decided not to and to use the Fully Kiosk app because the Fully Kiosk browser app allows you to have remote control of the tablet itself and gives you access to things like the camera for a motion sensor or for a camera entity in Home Assistant. The Fully Kiosk app has a Home Assistant integration, which saves you a ton of time when you compare to what I did in my previous video with getting this thing added to Home Assistant and all these sensors showing up. I decided to place my second tablet above an existing light switch, so wiring the outlet for power would be a bit easier. I decided on appropriate height and then used the recessed electrical box to trace out a rectangle on the wall. Then I carefully used a drywall saw to cut out the rectangle, making sure not to cut through any wires in the wall while I did it. With the power off, of course, I was able to run a new wire down to the electrical box below the tablet, bringing power up to the recessed box. After I put the existing electrical box with the new wires tied in back together, I slid the new wire inside the recessed box and then inserted the box into the rectangular hole in the drywall. The recessed box is an old work box and has little tabs that clamp it against the drywall, holding it in place so you don't need to screw it or nail it to a stud. It has a plate that goes on the front of it, which is what the tablet mount will actually be attached to. The tablet mount comes with two screws, which go right through the mount and into the recess box. Once the tablet mount was attached, I wired in the USB outlet and put the cover on. Then I attached the little right angle USB-C charging cable, the one that came with the mount, and plugged it into the tablet and then snapped the tablet in place. The last step was popping on the tablet mount's cover and the dashboard was ready to go. After installing Fully Kiosk and configuring it the way you want, and that's shown in my previous video, you can use Home Assistant on it just like you would on a regular tablet with the Home Assistant app, but you're actually going through the Fully Kiosk browser. Again, if you need any instruction on how to configure Fully Kiosk, my last video is still pretty up to date on how to do that. All right, next, let's talk about what I use it for. Before we do that though, I wanna to talk to you about the sponsor of today's video, Skillshare. When I first started using Home Assistant, I would get a ways into a project, but then I'd run into a wall when there was a need to understand some basic programming languages and formats. Changes to Home Assistant have really reduced the need to understand programming languages like YAML and JSON, but when getting into anything advanced, a basic understanding would be a huge help. Skillshare has a wide variety of courses, including a ton going over basic programming languages. One of the courses that has really helped me out is a course called JavaScript Objects and JSON Data by Jason Myers. This course really communicated clearly the basics of JSON formatting, which has helped me quite a bit with some of my more ambitious Home Assistant projects. As part of the sponsorship though, the first 1,000 people to click the link in the description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. Why not take a few classes and build up your core of knowledge when it comes to programming languages? Now, back to the video. Now, I've seen a lot of comments on Reddit and other places proclaiming how a smart home dashboard wouldn't be useful and they have no need because their home is so automated that there's no need to control things manually. And I do agree that a smart home should be mainly controlled by automations. You shouldn't have to manually do anything. However, that's just not reality. And these smart home dashboards aren't just for controlling your home, but also for viewing important information about the status of your home. I use this tablet for a ton of different things from something as simple as just checking the time all the way to viewing camera feeds and knowing if I have mail. It's super cool because the screen stays off unless the camera senses motion or the microphone hears something and then the screen turns on. Even though it's a screen on the wall, since it's flush mounted and the screen's off, it's not too distracting at all. From the panel, I have quick controls for all lights in the area, access to cameras and thermostat controls. I can see the status of all the exterior doors in the house, open and close the garage doors, and also send announcements to Echo speakers in the basement. This is the last episode. Please come upstairs when it's over. I have a mailbox card that shows me if I have mail, and I have a card for my vacuum cleaner controls as well. I use swipe cards on this dashboard to allow me to access other controls and information super quickly, but it doesn't need to be displayed all the time. 
Swiping the digital clock reveals the week's daily forecast. Swiping the lighting card reveals lighting and window covering controls for other areas of the house. Swiping the climate controls reveals temperature graphs for various rooms. And swiping the security card reveals controls for security systems. One of my favorite cards is my person card, which I adapted from a post someone made on Reddit. I can't remember who now. It shows a Bitmoji image of me with a location icon in one quarter and my phone's battery percentage in the other. Tapping the card pulls up more information on the person entity. When my Amcrest 8410 doorbell button is pressed, the camera feed is displayed on the tablet screen for a minute before it's switched back to the main page. I've actually added a smart lock to each of my exterior doors, so lock control is something I'm planning on putting on there as well. Some of you have asked if my wife uses a tablet, and yes, she actually does. She uses it frequently for things like announcing when dinner is ready using the preset announcement buttons. Time for supper. Or even typing in custom text-to-speech commands to our Google or Amazon speakers. You should spend more time with your family. The thing she uses it most for is actually the digital clock that's in the center of the dashboard. I also use it as a motion sensor to detect motion in the kitchen and basement areas using the camera on the tablet. And of course I can use the camera to check it, what's going on in the area as well. On the basement control panel, I have a couple button cards that trigger the setup and shutdown of my projector that I've automated, as well as some other things that I've already described. If you wanna see how I automated my projector setup, I made a video about that as well. When I installed this tablet the first time, I really thought I was going to use it for lighting controls a bit more than I actually do. But since motion sensors strategically place smart buttons and automations control my lighting in the living areas of my house, I really don't use it for controlling lighting that much. As far as guest usage, we try to keep our house pretty guest friendly by stopping a lot of automations when guests are over using an input boolean helper but there's really nothing that a guest would need to use our wall panel for besides maybe checking the time. Anything they could do on the wall panel, we obviously have manual methods, and since that's what they're probably used to, that's what they'll probably do. If I was gonna do another one of these, I'd probably either put it in the living room, which is a high traffic area, or the master bedroom, because it's just kinda cool having controls right there. Anyway, that's pretty much it for this video. I hope I covered most of the questions that you guys had in the past few months, and if I missed them, I'm sorry, leave a comment and I'll try to answer it there. I also hope I showed that these tablets aren't just a gimmick, and they're actually super useful, and if you really love data and understanding what's going on with your house, Having data displayed in a beautiful way using Home Assistant is a great way to do it. If you'd like to help out the channel, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. And if you want to help out monetarily, you can either give me a one-time thanks donation or you could become a member. Don't forget to like the video if you want to see more like this one. And as always, thanks for watching. See ya. Hey honey, what time did you get to sleep last night? <laughs>